Thunderhack Plus has been updated to Minecraft 1.21. So to get it, you want to head over to their official GitHub page. This is going to be linked down in the description below, together actually with my Discord server, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you could join that. Anyways, as you can see, they do also have a website. However, it's not currently working, so we can go over to the Releases tab over here, and then locate the latest build for Minecraft 1.21. Once we've found that, we can simply click on the .jar file, and that'll automatically start the download. Now, to use Thunderhack, you also need the Fabric API. I will link their ModRinth page down in the description as well. We want to head over to the Versions tab over here, and then download the latest one for Minecraft 1.21. Now, if you haven't already guessed it, you do actually need Fabric to use Thunderhack for Minecraft 1.21. If you don't have it or you're not sure where to get it, I will also link Fabric down in the description below. Anyways, now as you can see, I have the Fabric API as well as Thunderhack right in my downloads. What I can do next is press on Windows and R at the same time, and then in the box that pops up, I want to type in App Data, just like this. Then hit enter or click on OK, and you should be brought right over here. Head into the folder called Roaming, then .minecraft, then you might need to scroll down a little until you find the Mods folder. Inside of the Mods folder, you simply want to drag both the Fabric API as well as Thunderhack, just like that. And once you've done that, you can close up both of these, open up the Minecraft launcher, and launch Fabric 1.21. Here I have loaded up Thunderhack for Minecraft 1.21. The GUI usually looks great, but it's a little cluttered right now because they attempted to add the entire change log on here. As you can see, a lot changed, which is generally a good thing, right? Much bug fixes, stuff like that. Anyways, I'll head into single player right now and I'll show you how to use it. Now, upon loading into Minecraft, you will already get some tips in the chat over here, but I can press on P on my keyboard and that is going to open up this massive area as you can see with all of the utilities that this client has. So this is basically the click GUI. You can click on all of these utilities to turn them on and click on them once again to turn them off. As you can see a few of them have been enabled by default. You can hover above these and you'll get a bit of a little description that'll help you out and if you right click on them as you can see you'll get a customization menu with this cool animation in the background as you can see almost all of them have customization and some have more customization than others now you also have a search area over here if you want to search for something specific as you can see it'll narrow down all of the utilities if you type something in Overall, a really cool client, and I love how all of this has been executed. Now, with this click GUI area, there are a few things that I recommend you guys take an extra look at. Scrolling down is something you can do, so don't miss the things down here in the bottom. In the bottom here, we actually have X-Ray. If I turn this on, nothing is going to happen. That's because you need to right-click on it first, and then it'll give you the option to choose what you're actually going to be X-Raying for. Anyways, for the rest, the most important area is this client tab right up here, which includes all the main things, really. First off, we have this click GUI area. This is the click GUI, and opening the customization menu of this will allow you to, to customize this click GUI. If things are too small or too big, you can scale them through here as well, as well as do some more little customizations. Now, do also notice that if these, if you see these arrows in the customization menus, you can right click on these parts again, and it'll give you a second tier drop down menu in theory. Anyways, we can close that one because there are a few more other useful things over here as well. We have the Thunder GUI, which is another variant of the GUI. If I go here, as you can see, it'll bring, I believe, the Legacy GUI. This is the same one as that's used in 1.12.2. I know it's in there, uh, I, I think. And anyways, here we also have all of the tabs, as you can see, and all of the utilities with the cogs as well. You can use that if you prefer that to the other click GUI. I can open this back up and as you can see, you can customize that right here as well. Now, moving on even more in the Thunder GUI, as you can see, there's a HUD tab, which this one doesn't actually have because it's right over here. 
This, clicking on the HUD editor, will open up the HUD tab right over here. And your HUD is your heads up display. It's basically everything on your screen right now. In this case, it's only my hotbar, but in survival, it would include, for example, your hearts and hunger. This allows you to add things to your HUD. I can turn on FPS, for example, and now my FPS are getting displayed on my screen. In this menu over here, I can drag this around to wherever I want. As you can see, maybe I want to put it up there. Maybe I want to hide it off my screen. Maybe I want this down in the corner right over there, right? You can basically choose where you want to place it. And however you do this, it will actually be saved. Some of these you can customize as well, as you can see. And if you don't want to have them anymore, then you can, of course, simply just turn them off. Now, closing out of here and going back, you can also, as you can see, customize the actual HUD editor as well, which is, of course, great. Who doesn't like extra customization? Under this click GUI area, we have some more general client settings, which if you want to check those out over here, then you can. Now, for the rest, I recommend you check all this stuff out. Um, it should mostly be pretty self-explanatory. Of course, if you have questions, feel free to ask them below. But this isn't actually all that the client has to offer. Earlier, we saw some stuff be put into the chat over here. And this is something interesting we want to take a look at because this client actually has custom commands that you can use. Now, in default or vanilla Minecraft, you can use the slash to prefix a command and type in, for example, slash give. But for Thunderhack, instead of using the slash, you want to use the at. In this case, I'll type in at help and that'll give me a list of some of the commands that this client has and as well as what they do, as you can see right over here. These, cl these commands can do some really useful things, including actually binding keys to modules. Say you use one of the uh, utilities in here a lot, you can bind it to any key you want using commands. And the commands also allow you to save, manage, as well as use configs, which of course a lot of you will like to do. Anyways, basically for right now though, that was that. Thank you ever so much for watching. And I do of course hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.